Okay, guys, I'm going to make this real quick. I want to welcome you to the Dark Waters channel. There are two new stories going up today. One is submitted by Steve K. out of Arkansas. He talks about an encounter he had with a Bigfoot. The other one is submitted. I can't use that person's name. But anyway, submitted by a person who had a run in with some strange creatures on the lakefront in New Orleans. Um, lakefront is kind of an area where kids go to park and make out. Um, so these are the two stories that are going up. I hope you guys like them. Please subscribe uh, to the channel. The videos come out every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Typically, Saturday, Sunday-ish, depending on what's going on. But normally, by Sunday, you have multiple videos up and running. Uh, subscribe. Give me a follow. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all your social media. See you guys soon. I wanted to share this story with you, as you have touched on a subject that I have some experience with. I have never seen a dog man, but I have had several interactions with Bigfoots in the woods of Arkansas. As you are aware I worked as a construction engineer for a major utility company in Arkansas. This particular job was in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is an hour's drive southwest of Little Rock. The job was to build a power line from Hot Springs, Arkansas to Conway, Arkansas. Unlike the previous story I did not have to scout the path of this transmission line as we had several other power lines running through the area. This provided a significant amount of information, making my job easier. I was excited about this project because it was not far away from home and Hot Springs Arkansas is an awesome place to find ginseng. My encounter happened in August 2005. Excited to go ginseng? I completed my construction work in two days and had an entire day left over to waste. I was gathering ginseng roots a few miles outside Malvern, Arkansas. The spot was just off the road, which I liked because if anything went wrong I could quickly get back to my car. Estimating the distance I was about 100 yards below the road down in the base of the hollow. While standing there cleaning the soil off some freshly picked ginseng roots, I started to get the feeling someone was watching me. Scanning the area, I saw no one, and went back to work. However, I could not shake that feeling of being watched. Looking up the slope, I saw what looked like a man in a long black fur coat, standing next to a tree. Unsure if my eyes were playing tricks on me, I looked around for a rock to throw in his direction. I figured some ginseng er had claimed this to be his territory and was trying to run me off. Turning and throwing the rock, I realized that the figure was 50 yards away uphill. I shouted, hey get out of here, the figure didn't move or make a sound. Starting up the hill to its location I pulled myself up the steep slope using trees while maintaining my footing. I traveled about 25 yards when there was a huge sound. Looking up an entire tree was falling in my direction. By diving to the left, I was able to dodge the tree, but what I heard next made my heart skip several beats. The scream of a male Bigfoot. The yell was massive, the sound was so guttural and deep. I froze for a few seconds and looked up the hollow but nothing was there. Taking this as a sign to go, I hustled back up the other side of the hollow to my car. I didn't get a very close look at this Bigfoot, truthfully I was scared out my mind. When I got to the car my hands were shaking, and I was an emotional wreck. This was only my first experience with Bigfoot, and it took me a while to comprehend what happened to me. I was scared to enter the woods after this but was forced to as my job required extensive time in the woods. I didn't share my first encounter with anyone from work, only my wife and son. I decided to share this story because I'm looking for answers and closure to something that happened in my teenage years. As a young lady in the early 1990s I was a bit of a bad girl. My parents were not the most attentive as they were going through their divorce. I was a very attractive 16 year old and fully into my sexuality at the time. My off and on boyfriend was 17 years old and played football for a local Catholic school. Usually on the weekend we would find a place to park and make out. This Saturday night we went to the movies and headed to the New Orleans lakefront seeking privacy. We decided on a place which was very dark with wide open space. 
pulling in my boyfriend parked his dad's truck facing the lake, we always took his dad truck because it was elevated. It's important to understand that this truck was high, standing on the ground next to the passenger door I had to physically step up three feet to pull myself into his dad's truck. His dad used the truck for mud racing in the bayous during the summer. Anyway back to the story the location was several hundred feet away from some boat houses and a boat launch. Settling in we talked for a while and hung out bit before things started getting hot and heavy. Thirty minutes had passed when I thought I saw a black shadow out the corner of my eye. I wasn't sure but it looked like a person. By this time there were several other cars parked off in the distance, assumedly they were doing what we were. So I never gave any thought to it, and neither did my boyfriend. Turning my attention back to him another fifteen minutes passed by and were just finished making out when we both saw a figure moving towards the truck from the driver's side. The person was a good thirty-five yards away and moving quickly on all fours towards the truck. This is going to sound strange and stupid, but this person was moving like an animal. Similar to the way dog or cat would move. I could see the palms of the hands when his body jerked forward and the reflection of the sneakers from the moonlight. The person was moving forward, but their body was slightly angled. It looked crazy, as the person got closer I could see much better. He was wearing a grey t-shirt and grey sweatpants with white tennis shoes. To this day I don't understand why we didn't just pull off. I guess my boyfriend was afraid, or just in awe of what he was seeing. I really can't say how much time passed, but soon this guy was in front of our truck. We both slid down into the seats trying to hide. Peeking over that dashboard I could see. He was very tall and slim with long limbs, his head was belt, and he was white, but not normal for white people in Louisiana. He had a eerie pale skin, it's hard to explain. He just stood there in front of the truck not looking at us but staring into the darkness where the other cars were parked. Looking at this man was surreal, he was clearly a man, but something was evil and abnormal about him. Both windows in the truck were rolled up, so I didn't hear anything but his chest movement was rapid like he was breathing heavy. My boyfriend was motionless, and his eyes were constantly moving back and forth, I opened my mouth to speak and he gestured to me to be quiet. The man was just standing there, and then what happened completely changed what I thought to be humanly possible. Taking two steps the man lunged forward his right hand hitting the ground then his left, followed by his feet pooping up in a backwards motion, and he was off and running again. The motion was so smooth and fluid, he was gone into the distance and within twenty seconds. My boyfriend slid back up in his seat and said what that fuck was that? Frantically he cranked the truck throwing it into reverse and then began to back out of the area. The lights from the truck lit up the entire area as we backed away, in the distance we could see four figures standing there looking back at the truck. Their eyes reflected a reddish color in the headlight. We were out of the area in no time as my boyfriend ran every stop sign getting out of there. Stopping a few miles away, we talked and I really got freaked out. He told me there was more than one of these men near the truck. He saw a second man in his side mirror near the rear of the truck. He was taller than the one near the hood. Frightened and shaken my boyfriend estimated that he was seven feet tall, and was looking into the bed of the truck. We later learned that other high school students, who went to that area, had some frightening encounters with tall pale men who ran on all fours and had red eyes. What they were I don't know. Do you have any idea? As a little boy I would often play alone. I was an awkward kid, much larger than the other children my age and this often left me on the receiving end of taunts and bullying. As time passed my size proved to be my greatest asset and often helped me out in some sticky situations. It was my size that saved my life when I was 15 years old. My parents both were hard-working people which forced me to spend plenty of time on my own. Our house was a two-bedroom bungalow in a quiet neighborhood, there were plenty of kids around to hang out with so evenings were spent playing outside. 
One evening right at dusk my friend Daryl and I ventured into a wooded area not far from our houses. This place was like a wonderland for two young boys, there were downed trees and many things to climb on. As the sun began to set we decided it was time to exit the area and head home. Daryl was a few steps ahead of me when I started to get the feeling we were being watched. Looking around there was nothing in eyesight but I still felt unsettled. Just then there was a rustling in the bushes to my left and what looked like a person trying to hide next to a tree. Daryl who was much more athletic than me took off running. By the time I started running he was well ahead of me shouting for me to run. The sound of footsteps could now be heard behind me as I ran, up ahead of me was a downed tree, Daryl vaulted over it with ease. When I approached my foot slipped and I tumbled forward almost hitting my head on one of the branches. No sooner than I could catch my balance was someone grabbing me by the back of my pants. Looking back what I saw still scares me to this day, it was a man we all knew and had given name Cain. Cain was a homeless drifter who was always in and out of jail. Some of the older kids in the neighborhood had a few run-ins with him that had left one of them in the hospital. He was rumored to be crazy and very dangerous. As he pulled me closer to him, I bowed my fist and swung as hard as I could landing a punch square to his cheek. This only infuriated him, and he said. I was only going to scare you now, I'm going to kill you. He looked serious so I took the opportunity to run, after a few paces he tackled me and attempted to climb on top of me. After a few minutes of fighting him off me, he was clearly getting tired. His breathing was heavy and he leaned his body weight on top of me trying to use it as leverage. All I could think of was to bite him, after sinking my teeth into his forearm he let go and begin to scream in pain. You motherfucker! He shouted. And stared at his arm like he could not believe I bite him. This was my opportunity to get away, so I slid away and sprinted out of the woods. When I reached my street Daryl was running towards me with two older kids from the neighborhood armed with pipes and bats. They asked me what happened, and the two older boys went into the woods instructing Darry and I to go home. The next day I asked what happened to Cain, the boys never gave a straightforward answer, they simply said no one had to worry about him anymore. A few months passed, then one evening there was a news story that a construction crew found the body of a homeless man beaten to death in the woods near my house. We all knew what happened to him, police questioned kids in the area, but no one cooperated with the police investigation. Kane had terrorized the kids of the neighborhood and would not be missed. Do you want more stories? Please subscribe your support is appreciated.